You have a new proposal this week um, uh, that I, I just saw today, which I, I've actually been thinking about because I've just been doing some research on the movement that pushed for the 40-hour work week or the eight-hour work day um, for, for a book I'm writing. And um, it, it, the, the legislation would move uh, past that to a 32-hour work week with no loss of pay, that it's a, not a radical idea. It's time for working people to benefit from advancements in AI, automation, new technology, not just corporate CEOs and wealthy stockholders on Wall Street. How, how, how would legislation like that work, actually? Well, for a start, the 40-hour week, as I recall, was established in 1940. All right, that is 83, 84 years ago. There have been a few modest changes in the economy over the last <laughs> 84 years. <laughs> and what's gone on is workers today are far more productive. I mean, think about all of the technology and equipment that's out there today. So the question that we're going to be asking tomorrow is who benefits from all of the changes that have taken place uh, in the economy, the new technology, and by the way, the artificial intelligence and robotics that's sitting around the corner that is going to transform the entire economy. Most people, if you got a job today, it's going to be very different 10, 15 years ago uh, from today if you have that job. So what we are saying is with all of this new technology and increase in worker productivity, workers should benefit from these changes, not just large corporations and the stockholders.